Hey Defenders, welcome back. Today, I would like to announce the Sock Fortress Threat Intel API. And in today's video, I'm going to demonstrate how we can integrate our Wazoo Manager or our Greylog instance with the Sock Fortress Threat Intel API. So stick around and we'll jump into it. So in today's video, I'm going to run through the documentation that is currently the readme within our GitHub repo of the Sock Fortress Threat Intel, which I'll link in the description below. Now, before we do get started, I do want to recommend that you integrate this with if you are following with the world's best seam stack series and have a gray log box i do recommend integrating the thread intel api with your gray log instance rather than your wazoo manager because of gray logs caching mechanism so we are currently in this beta phase limiting the amount of api requests that you can make to 500 requests per day and gray logs inbuilt caching gives you more of a buffer until you reach this 500 level limit where the wazoo manager is always going to make api requests for every event that it's detects where gray log let's say i want to look up a domain name that my endpoints are attempting to resolve gray log is going to make one request and then cache it for however amount of time you set your caching for which i'll demonstrate uh, here throughout this video some other considerations are this is currently only built to support windows sysmon events the sock fortress wazoo detect rules need to also be added to your wazoo manager uh, which i linked to the repo where our wazoo rules are so you can grab those there and then we currently only support ioc types of ip a domain or a sha 256 hash and then you will also need a valid api key which you can request at our website which i also link in the repo here so let's go ahead and jump into it so from the wazoo manager's perspective which i'll start with this integration first uh, we built a custom sockfortress.py script that will add to the integration block of our wazoo manager to go ahead and get started so i'm going to copy the curl command to go ahead and retrieve our custom sockfortress.py script i'm now going to copy it over into the var osec integrations folder so that wazoo will be able to run this integration as needed i'll need to change ownership as well we'll need to modify permissions so that all that is set correctly and then I'll just remove the file that I downloaded to my temp directory here. All right, and now I can just do a quick, just ls, lh this out to verify that my permissions and ownership are set correctly. So that looks good. So now let's go ahead and edit our osec.com file and add our integration block. So I'm gonna go ahead and open this file with a text editor. I'm gonna scroll down and I'll just throw it under like the OS query integration block. You could really put this wherever but i'm just gonna throw it here for my sake and then paste that there and now you'll notice we're calling our custom dash sockfortress.py script now we need to implement our api key so i'll go ahead and paste my api key within here by the time this video is released this api key will not be valid anymore so i'm not going to worry about blurring it out and don't try to copy it because it won't work now let's add the rule groups that we want to trigger this integration and if you've been following along with the series you know i am a big fan of sysmon and here are the current sysmon events that this api will currently support so by default i've just included my network connections in dns queries uh, and those are tied to sysmon event 3 and sysmon event 22 and those are the ones i want to add by default now sysmon event 3 will correlate to ioc types of ip address so we take the ip address that our endpoint connected to and run that through our threat intel sysmon event 22 is going to be any dns query so any domain that tries to be resolved by our endpoints that domain will be sent to the threat intel api and results will be given back and now you have some others that i list out here that will generate a SHA-256 hash that we can send to the threat intel. Now, these events are very noisy and you're likely going to run into your 500 request limit very quickly with these. So I would recommend just starting maybe with DNS query or maybe with network connections or maybe starting with just these two and see, depending on you know how many endpoints are connected to your manager will dictate 
how quickly you may reach that API quota. So just something to consider there, but your other options are also detailed here if you would like to do so. So for this demo, I'm gonna go ahead and just, uh, I'll just do event 22 since that's what I want to demonstrate. Uh, and that'll be a DNS query in this video. So I'll go ahead and save that file off. And now let's go ahead and restart our Wazoo manager. So now that we've restarted our manager, I'm gonna go ahead and tail the integrations.log file. And now let's go ahead and kick off a DNS request on our endpoint that I have connected to our manager. And let's go ahead and make sure that the sockfortress.py script is being triggered correctly. So if I jump onto my endpoint here and let's just, I'm just gonna ping this hollygap.com because I know this is a domain that exists within our threat Intel. So I made my ping go out and here we now see a new entry where the Wazoo manager has invoked our custom desktopfortress.py script uh, and has passed our API key that we see here. So that looks good. We don't get any errors back. And now if we go into Grafana and I should be able to now refresh my Grafana entry and you'll see that now I have an IOC detected of hollygap.com. And if we scroll down here, we see the threat Intel enrichment take place. So here we can see when the IOC was last scene. We get some report ID information. Here we also link to the Alien Vault report. So I could copy that, throw that within my browser here in a new window. And now as a SOC analyst, I can very quickly now get more meta details around this particular IOC. We also include the link to virus total as well. So I can go ahead and copy this link, throw it into virus total, and also see very quickly what other details virus total may have on this particular IOC. IOC. Another useful feature is that we also include the original process GUID. So because this is its own separate alert, we really don't have much details as to the ping executable was ran and he's the one that actually made the DNS request, but maybe we wanna know, okay, what parent process actually invoked the ping process to do so. So we actually include the original process GUID and I'll go ahead and copy my field name of data when when event data process GUID paste that in my search query and now if I go back to the IOC alert that was detected I'll go ahead and copy this value here that gives me the process GUID I will throw that in my search make sure you also do include the double quote and now I get the full chain of events that happened prior to this IOC being flagged so we now see our process creation and we can now see that ping was uh, ran via the command prompt so we now get more in insight into, okay, now not only just was an IOC detected, but we get some more meta details into how this IOC actually came to take place, uh, which I think is really helpful. If you are running your own tests and seeing that when you are invoking the API, so you're telling the log file and you're seeing that it, just, it is triggering, or if you're getting errors, you can always turn on the integrator debug and set that to a level two within your local internal options.com file of your Wazoo manager, restart the server, Service, and then that'll give you more details as to why the API request may be failing. And if that still doesn't work, reach out to us on our service desk, which we also link in the repo as well at helpdesk.sockfortress.co. And we'd be happy to help you out. So that's it from a Wazoo perspective. Now let's go ahead and actually do the Graylog integration. And this is the integration I do recommend because of Graylog's caching mechanism that's built in. It really saves on your API quota, which I strongly recommend. So on my Graylog box here, I am first going to go into my system. I'm going to go into lookup tables and we're first going to create a data adapter. Now, this is a configuration that we'll set that actually specifies our API endpoint, which is intel.sockfortress.co slash search. So I'll go ahead and create a data adapter. I'm gonna go ahead and create the HTTP JSON path adapter type. And now I'll go ahead and set my title and description. So I'll just copy here what I have in the repo, which is what I recommend recommend. Now let's go ahead and copy the lookup URL. And I'm going to go ahead and paste that here. And now we're going to set our JSON path. So I need to set this to a value of dollar sign dot success. 
this and then a dollar sign dot data. And now let's go ahead and set our HTTP headers, which the API will require for you to authenticate with. If you do not provide these, you will get a forbidden and the API will respond with a forbidden and you won't get any results. So we're first going to set a content type and we have these headers listed out here that you can just copy and paste. So add that and now let's go ahead and add the header that's going to contain our API key as well. So I'm going to go ahead and paste that there, select add, and now let's go ahead and create our adapter. So now you should have your Sock Fortress Threat Intel adapter has now been created. Before proceeding further, I do recommend testing the lookup. So Greylog gives us an easy way to do that. We can just copy a IOC value. So in this case, I'll just use the hollygap.com that we tested with Wazoo, run our lookup, and if all goes well, we should see our response that we get back here. So we get our virus total URL, our alien vault report, and some other meta details around the IOC. So we've now verified that the request out to the Sock Fortress that Intel API is working correctly. Now let's go ahead and set up our cache. So Greylog is first going to check the cache and see if a value exists before actually invoking the Sock Fortress API, which is a awesome feature within Greylog uh, that is just built in and is easy to use. So I'm gonna go ahead and set my title and description and all that. I'm just gonna copy what's within the repo on the readme here. I'm going to give it the name of Sock Fortress dash that Intel cache. I'm set maximum entries. I'm gonna set these to 1000 and then they'll expire after 60 minutes, which would give us an hour. So let's say for example, Greylog has cached our hollygap.com and I ran that at 12 in the afternoon. Now, when 1 p.m. hits, Greylog is going to remove that entry entry from the cache. And if an endpoint then makes another request out to hollygap.com, that will invoke the Sock Fortress API. So you can tweak the maximum entries and the expire after access to whatever values you seem fit. Do keep in mind, you don't want to get too crazy with this because this does store it within memory. So if you over allocate your caching, your Greylog instance could run out of memory as it's trying to add more items to the caches than the memory actually allows it to do. So do keep that in mind. So I'll go ahead and select create cache. And lastly, let's configure our lookup table. And the lookup table is just going to bring the data adapter and the cache together. So I'm going to go ahead and copy these names here. And let's now select the data adapter that we recently created, which is the Sock Fortress Threat Intel. And then we're also going to select the Threat Intel cache as well and go ahead and create our lookup table. So, all right, our lookup table is now done. Now, what we need to do is add pipeline rules that will invoke this lookup table table when we want it to. So I'm gonna go back into my menu, I'll select system, and then I'm gonna go ahead and select pipelines. And actually what I need to do real quick is create a new pipeline. I'll connect my Wazoo stream to this pipeline that I have here. So I'll go ahead and hit save. And now let's go ahead and create pipeline rules. So I'm gonna go ahead and select my manage rules. I'm gonna select create rule. And then back in my repo, I'm gonna copy the two events that I have here. Now, notice these are just for Sysmon event threes and event 22s. If you're wanting to take advantage of the other Sysmon rule group names, then you would need to build them out accordingly, which I'll leave you guys to explore and figure out on your own. So I'll go ahead and copy and paste this value here. And now what this is going to do is going to match when our rule group of three is set to sysmon event three and make sure that the destination is not the local host and also make sure that is not a private IP space. So you don't burn API requests when you don't need to. You know, if it's a network connection out to a private IP space, we don't need to worry about burning an API quota for that. So uh, that logic is also in place for this pipeline rule as well. And then we now call the lookup table. So we're calling our Sock Fortress Threat Intel lookup table. We're going to prefix everything that we get responded back with the Sock Fortress underscore. So I'm going to go ahead and paste that here, select apply, select save and close. And then I'm going to do the same for the DNS query as well. So I'll go ahead and put that in my copy buffer there, paste that there. And now here you see we are matching on Syspawn event 22 and then doing our Sock Fortress Threat Intel lookup. So I'll go ahead and copy, paste that there 
there, select save. And now let's actually apply these new pipeline rules to the Sock Fortress Threat Intel pipeline that we just created. So under stage zero here, I'm just going to select edit and then I'm going to select my two new Threat Intel pipeline rules that we just created. I'll select save. And now uh, when we test, we should be good to go. So I'm going to go ahead and actually disable the Wazoo one. And I'm just going to go ahead and just blow the integration block away. Go ahead and restart the Wazoo manager so that we know for sure that the API integration did not take place through Wazoo, but actually through Greylog itself. All right, so we've restarted our Wazoo manager. And now let's go ahead and actually trigger the same event. So I'll go ahead and do our ping out to hollygap.com. And then what will happen is once that log hits Greylog, Greylog is going to route it through this third Intel. You see our message throughput just increased there. Now it's back to zero, but it's done because it's already gotten its response back. So that has now worked uh, correctly. So Greylog is now the one actually doing the API enrichment out to the Thread Intel API. And now if we go back into Grafana, and now if we refresh Grafana, we will now get our Sysmon event 22, and then we also see our event one. So if we go ahead and open the Sysmon event 22, which is actually what else I like about the Greylog integration rather than doing it on the Wazoo side, is that is it's actually going to enrich the normal event that triggered the Threat Intel API. So Notice this is a typical Sysmon event 22. We see our DNS query name is out to our hollygap.com. We're getting all the meta details around the alert. And now if we continue to scroll down, we now see our Sock Fortress enrichment start to take place. So again, what I like better about this is Greylog is going to enrich the raw alert for you with these extra fields that we have here. And then everything's still the same. We still have our virus total URL. We still have our report URL and notice that now I don't have to open up a new tab and copy my process ID over because that is part of my raw alert here. So now I can just copy and paste this within my same search and it's a little, a little more user friendly to go with. So that's going to wrap it up for today's video. I'm super excited to introduce this to you guys. Uh, do keep in mind, this is still within a beta phase. So if there's any hiccups or troubles that you have along the way, just please reach out to us and let us know. And I plan to continue to develop this out and make it even better and add more features and just make it better as, as we go. So that's going to wrap it up for today's video. I appreciate you guys hanging out with me and I will see you in the next one.